in May of 2016, Duke Assistant Professor Kafwi Zarasa was welcomed at the White House by President Barack Obama, who honored him and several dozen other young scientists for their early prowess and leadership in the scientific community. For me, it was incredibly humbling for the scientific uh, sort of service that I've done, both traveling and speaking for scientific advocacy and mentoring, to come together with the work that we spend many hours doing in the lab. That work in the lab is nothing short of revolutionary. Zarasa believes that new neuroengineering technologies hold great promise for treating psychiatric illnesses like schizophrenia, autism, depression, and addiction. Sometimes the medicine that we use to treat the heart is electricity, right? This is the concept behind a defibrillator or behind a pacemaker, right? So I, I had this, this thought that perhaps we can apply the same sort of thinking to psychiatric illness. He believes it is possible to create an implanted pacemaker for the brain to help regulate electrical impulses similar to a heart pacemaker. You'd have a version of the pacemaker that could be used for schizophrenia, a version that could be used for autism, a version that could be used for depression as well. Zarasa has developed small helmets for mice that registers 10 brain areas simultaneously and records the activity to a computer. So we can extract information from an animal's brain, calculate what that brain activity is supposed to look like, and then use the stimulation to correct in real time and put electrical communication back into normal patterns. With a father who was an engineer and a mother who was a nurse, the marriage of medicine and technology seemed inevitable for Zarasa. He entered Duke University School of Medicine in 2001 as an MD, PhD student. Hearing about the community here, the opportunity to do amazing research and engage in this field of neuroengineering was something that totally shifted my perspective and in my direction. A proverbial light went on during a psychiatry rotation when he met a patient who was complaining of a headache. And it turns out this wasn't a headache. He, he, was, he had believed that the government had planted a chip in his head and that they were stealing his thoughts. And yet no one could tell me what was going on in this guy's head. Zarasa joined the Duke Center for Neuroengineering and excelled in the lab of renowned Duke neuroscientist Miguel Nicolelis, who broke new ground with pioneering work on a brain-machine interface that allowed a paralyzed young man to kick a soccer ball at the 2015 World Cup. For me, he is one of the ultimate scientific risk takers and innovators. During this time, Zarasa was granted a nationally unprecedented career path that combined his psychiatry residency with a position as an assistant professor running his own lab. And next thing you know, I was a resident and a faculty member as an N equals one experiment. <laughs> So it, in theory, shaved off from nine to 11 years on the typical timeline it takes for research scientists to become independent. In addition to his recent Young Scientist Award, Zarasa has been honored with the Rising Star Translational Research Award from the International Mental Health Research Organization and the Outstanding Resident Award from the National Institute of Mental Health. Zarasa met his wife, Erica, during their first year of medical school at Duke. She is a child psychiatrist who shares Zarasa's passion for addressing psychiatric illnesses to heal families. They also share a passion for a particularly less than gentle sport. My wife is the most beautiful, gentle person in this world, and many people are shocked to learn that we love cage fighting. <laughs> I love the idea of people physically pushing themselves to extremes and, and challenging them. As far as pushing himself with his research, Zarasa is pulling no punches when it comes to finding a better treatment for mental illness. My career has also reflected some risk taking that, that Duke has done. They were willing to set up an experiment, they were willing to put up safeguards, they were willing to provide administrative support. This place that is Duke has remained committed to that experiment, and I think in, in many ways the successes that I've had early in my career have been a reflection of that commitment.